Hey, what's up YouTube? It's Icy. We have something pretty cool to talk about in today's video related to both iOS and jailbreaking. So today actually marks the first public firmware release from Apple of 2017. After being in beta since December 14th, 2016, Apple has finally released iOS 10.2.1 to the general public. So it was in beta stages for over a month, which is very peculiar for such a small firmware release. Of course, it did happen to actually fall kind of in the hall holiday time frame, but now we have this very minor update. Let's go ahead and talk about it. Let's go ahead and launch up Safari here and navigate to Apple's developer portal, which is exclusive to registered developers. You'll notice that we have iOS 10.2.1 now listed under release software. So all of Apple's previous beta software is now moved to release software. I personally am more excited about Mac OS Sierra 10.12.3 because I happen to notice a ton of bugs inside of Mac OS 10.12.2. Hopefully this fixes a number of them. And speaking of bugs, that's really all iOS 10.2.1 was issued for. But you'll notice here that it was released on today's date, January 23rd, 2017. And anyone who is actually on the latest beta, which was released last week, will not see an OTA update inside of settings or when connecting your device to iTunes, simply because you're already on the latest version. The build number of 14D27 is identical from the latest beta to the current public release. So essentially the beta was GM or Gold Master, the finalized version. As for features of iOS 10.2.1, unfortunately there really aren't any. See when we actually go ahead and switch over to settings, general, followed by software update, you notice that we have iOS 10.2.1, but it merely reads, quote, iOS 10.2.1 includes bug fixes and improves the security of your iPhone or iPad. That's it. There are zero outward facing changes. And after all of the beta releases, we have yet to uncover really anything aside from a few minor performance updates, as well as possibly some battery life improvements, depending on your device and your situation. But for me, I happen to notice battery life is pretty much the same from iOS 10.2 to 10.2.1. Keep in mind that this does come after the relatively feature heavy iOS 10.2 update, which brought three new wallpapers for the iPhone 7 and 7 plus Unicode nine emojis, which were absolutely huge. Also redesigned emojis and new artwork for the majority of them, a brand new TV application, new settings, messages, effects, and more. So 10.2 is pretty huge. It's obvious that Apple needed to actually address some new new issues that were introduced with the release of iOS 10.2 in 10.2.1. So really they're kind of just smoothing out the edges of iOS 10.2 and fixing any potential complications that it ended up causing. So that's it. Now, as from a jailbreaker's perspective, iOS 10.2.1 is huge for one main reason, stability. See, iOS 10.2.1 is actually a really awesome thing because it does fix some of the issues that 10.2 introduced. That means that iOS 10.2.x is a more stable jailbreak target now than ever before, and as we all know, Pangu likes to target firmwares that are definitely more stable. They kind of like to wait until Apple can smooth things out before releasing any jailbreak tool. And of course, they've been silent ever since the release of their last jailbreak utility. Now, several things from the iOS 10's initial release have actually pushed back the jailbreak window, but now seems to be the opportune moment to strike, as I've said, for a number of reasons throughout some of my latest videos. If you have yet to watch them, I definitely recommend checking them out. I will have a special playlist link down below in the description as well as in your cards right now. Definitely watch through some of these videos for some additional information and why we should likely turn our attention toward iOS 10.2.1 as a possible jailbreakable firmware. Now, if you're on iOS 10.1.1 or lower, definitely do not even think about updating to iOS 10.2.1 just yet. In fact, even if you're on iOS 10.2, just stay where you're at. The best policy when talking about upgrading and jailbreaking is just to stay on as low of a firmware as possible until a solution is released. Once a tool is released for the latest public Public firmware, then at that point you are safe to update and only then do not get locked out of jailbreaking, especially if you're on iOS 10.1.1 or lower, there is technically already a solution for a number of devices. It's still in beta and hopefully it will be finalized or at least stabilized relatively soon. It seems like Luke is kind of losing interest in that. So that's why I've said we should kind of turn our attention toward iOS 10.2.1. But at any rate, if you're on that low of a firmware being 10.1.1 or lower, then 
your best odds are, of course, to stay where you're at until we have actual confirmation of something. Same thing goes for iOS 10.2. Just stay where you're at until we actually have a jailbreak solution released. I'm going to let you guys know anytime anything happens, be sure to click that subscribe button below next to my channel name if you have yet to. And then you can also just like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter for even more frequent updates. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.